Hello, my friends. Uh, welcome to, I guess, my second gaming collection video. The first gaming collection video, I uh, showed you my collection from the Super NES. Now, if for all you gaming whizzes, uh, you know that the next generation, I would be showing things from like the PlayStation or the Nintendo 64. However, I grew up in a not so privileged environment, so at the time, the my parents could not afford a new system. And the GameCube I got, I believe was new, but the vast majority of these games were used, which is fine by me. Uh, but we'll move on to the GameCube, the Nintendo GameCube. What people call the purple cube, mine was black. So I will be doing like I did last time. I separated them by category. Uh, one category may take a couple of trips over there. But first we'll go into the mainstay uh, Nintendo games, like Mario and Zelda. So. Alright, the first game we start with is Luigi's Mansion. Now, when we got the GameCube, I, we got it at a place that I think had used games, so we got four used games to go along with the system, and this was one of them. Uh, the funny story is, when I got the GameCube, I had... Uh, the place we had was selling the systems, I think, around the same price. So my parents gave me the choice of the three, and I chose the GameCube because it had Luigi on the um, it had Luigi on the box. I I think it it might have come with the game. I don't remember, but that's why I've been a Nintendo freak since then. Uh, and the next systems you'll see are the Wii, the Wii U, and the Switch. But yeah, this is probably one of my favorite GameCube games. Nowadays, I can see the flaws. It's a little short and a bit easy, but it's a great game. And it gave us a really good sequel in with the 3DS version. And I haven't played the Switch version, but I'm eager to. Next game is Super Mario Sunshine. Now, one thing I like about this game when I got it is that... It only cost $15, which I paid for from money that I got uh, from my grandmother, so that's pretty cool. Um, uh, I remember that I was a little... Th this game was a little odd to me because it uh, it was a lot different than what, I was, than what I would expect a 3D Mario game to get be. Because remember, I didn't have the 64, so Mario 64 really wasn't part of my... Uh, lexicon in video gaming until I got the three, the DS version. But I've always liked this game because of its difficulty. I remember even to this day I know that it's a bit it, it's infamous being it's significantly more difficult than most other Mario games. But I got this $15 at a time we were selling new for 50 so I got really lucky there. There was a, when my parents when we moved from hotel to numerous other apartments the one place we were always near was this used game place, and it was really great to get really cheap games. Especially for a GameCube, it didn't do all that well. The next game is Super Smash Bros. Melee. Now, in case you guys haven't noticed yet, I am not doing this in order of when I got the games. Because, except for a few, I don't remember exactly when I got the games. Or in what order I got the games. But I do remember why I got this game. My mother was going for some kind of surgery, I think, back in uh, L.A., Los Angeles. And I played this game uh, at a... Uh, I'm not sure they have these anymore, but... In the, play, in the playground section of McDonald's, they would let... You, would, you were able to... Um, play some games that they had there. Uh, one was a, a Mario Party, but the other one was Smash Brothers. And I thought that was a really cool idea because I was watching some kids in front of me play with like Mario and Pikachu and fighting. And I played this and I was like, I gotta get this game. I got it a few months later for my birthday, so that was a really great birthday. Uh, of the Smash Brothers, I'm not sure if this is my favorite, but the mechanics are my favorite. I like the speed of it and the... And I like the speed of it and the... Uh, 
level designs, like in Smash Ultimate, most levels I play are from the Smash Brothers uh, game, are from the Melee games. But if I had to guess, this might be my favorite GameCube game. I don't know. I was thinking about that. But it's definitely a top five. Next is Mario Power Tennis. And again, I never played the original Mario Tennis, so I have nothing to compare it to. Now, I don't remember where I saw this, but I um, f I saw this game in some kind of advertisement, and I, had to, and I had to get it. And when I got it, I actually became obsessed with tennis for a few months. Like, we got rackets and balls, and we even, and I even practiced. Now, I'm not exactly an athletic whiz, so I kind of gave up on it pretty quickly. Uh, but I still love the game, and I play it every once in a while because... It is really good. It's unfortunate that the next couple of games weren't so great. I got Mario Tennis open for the 3DS, and, kinda, and after about a year, I traded it in for a number of other for a number of older DS games. Um, we can get in, we can do uh, my DS games later in the future, but uh, and then I I rented uh, Mario Ultra Smash, I believe it's called, for the Wii U, and that was terrible. It's just so amazing how much content is in an older system. Like, this game is packed with content. Actually, P. Pra P. T. Piranha is an unlockable character, I only locked him, and I only unlocked him a couple of years ago. And I've owned this game for about a decade now, I, I believe. Yeah. No, no, more than a decade. Because I got it when I was, when I was, uh, not even, I think I got it when I was like 10 or something. But, uh, Mario Power Tennis. Next is the most recent game in my collection. Well, actually, no, not the most recent. One of the most recent is Mario Mario Golf Toadstool Tour. Forgive the glare. My light is pretty extreme, but here it is. Mario Mario Golf Toadstool Tour. Now, as you can clearly see, the... Uh, the case is in not such great condition because I got a... I got it... While living, I got it of uh, living where I am here, like a couple of years ago, in a used game place. Used game places, used game stores are much harder to find nowadays, and the deals aren't as good. I got this for nine dollars, which is not bad considering how old it is. And yeah, no instruction manual in the case is busted, but the game works. It's un it's rather unfortunate that. Uh, it's rather unfortunate that I didn't get it when I was younger. I I actually had an opportunity to get it. But I chose another game that I no longer own, uh, and that's kind of ironic. But yeah, I've grown to really like it, even as an adult. So if anybody, I don't, I, I've heard that the 3DS golf game is also really good, but I don't know, I'm kind of, like, the tennis one wasn't so great. But I do love the golf game because it has that Mario sports charm. Again, Mario Golf Toadstool Tour. I'm not tapping on the case because I'm afraid of it breaking. Alright, next we have Metroid Prime. Uh, interesting story. I got this game. Uh, not got. I, I discovered this game when I was uh, getting a haircut at, I believe, Supercuts. I don't really have these now, but when I was a kid, if you got a haircut at one of those places, you, get, you could play games while they got your haircut. And I actually didn't play it while I was getting my haircut. I played it while waiting. Uh, I was waiting my turn. I was playing Metroid Prime on one of their Game Cubes, and it's like, wow, this is so cool. So I remembered the I remember the name, and the next my next birthday, my parents were able to get me get it for me. I'm not sure how much it cost them. They probably got it at um, the used game place because I know that the, uh, that, that, the, that the that the that the plastic on the case is a little beat up, but not too bad. But yeah, I love this game. Uh, it's probably my favorite first-person shooter, and I think it holds up extremely well today. Like even be it ha it's longer, it has more content than most other, you know, single-player-only first-person shooters. Uh, so yeah, if you can find it or find the Wii version, the the, tr the trilogy, I recommend you give it a try. If you like any kind of uh, first-person shooters, you'll love this.
and next is the sequel in Metroid Prime 2 Echoes. Not much more to say about this, it's basically Metroid Prime again, and that's a strength and weakness. The problem I have with this game is that it is a little longer and you have to backtrack a lot more. Not to mention the the way you go from light to dark world can get a little annoying, but still a really good sequel and has a great villain in Dark Samus. If you like the first one, you'll like this one, and of course you like the third one too. We'll get to that when we get to that. But Metroid Prime 2. It has a multiplayer uh, mode, but it's kind of worthless. Next is The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker. Now forgive the stuff on here. A friend of mine uh, borrowed the game and put some stuff here. You know, childhood friends, it is what it is. But it doesn't really affect it. Like, the disc is, no one ever damaged the disc and they still have their maps in here from when they played it. It's been a while since I played it again. But not much, a lot of people love this game and I can see why. I used to play this all the time when I was younger. There's always a couple of there was always a couple of sections I was always stuck on, but I eventually it took me a couple of year a few years actually, but I eventually uh, pulled through and uh, completed the game. Now the funny part is I got this game. My parents gave me this game, but not because I wanted it. There was a game I wanted called Sonic Heroes, and I guess because my dad got a good deal on it, like a two for one, he got this game too because he recognized the name Zelda referencing A Link to the Past when they played that on the Super NES. Um, and it's kind of ironic. We'll get to it later, but Sonic Heroes is just a mediocre game that I don't really play anymore, and Wind Waker is not only one of my favorite gaming games, but one of my favorite games of all time, and potentially one of my, potentially my favorite Zelda game, and definitely my favorite 3D Zelda game. Although I'm not sure how I compare this to Breath of the Wild yet. But here it is, The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker. I suggest you try it. It's probably more practical if you get the HD version on the Wii U. And last in this section is The Legend of Zelda Collector's Edition. Now, my parents never shelled this much money out for a game, $45 here in the used game place. But because of the rarity and the fact they had old Zelda games that my parents remembered, which is funny because they, that's kind of ironic because the one game they remembered isn't even on this uh, collection. But I'm really glad they got this collection. It's kind of funny. I, pl I played Wind Waker for about two years before we got this game, and I still... And I liked it even as a child. It's kind of weird because you wouldn't expect me to like the original Zelda, but I played that thing a lot when we got this. I played Zelda and Ocarina of Time a lot um, as, a, as a child. I didn't play a whole lot of the Link uh, Zelda 2 because I thought the side-scrolling was a bit awkward. And I didn't play with Jorah's Mask because it was really confusing. But I played the other two a lot. It was also kind of funny playing the demo, but it was worthless because by that point, I was already I, I owned the Wind Waker. But yeah, I'm really glad they got this game. Now it's a little obsolete. Well, not really. It's a little obsolete because you can get the the the, the two Zeldas are on the Switch uh, membership, and Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask can get the remakes on the 3DS. And it sounds like, for the most part, that they are uh, really good adaptations. So there's not really much reason to shell out money for the this. But if you find it for like, I don't know, fifteen twenty dollars, it might be worth it. In the next jump cut, you will see the next section of games. Alright, here we are. The next pile I decided to separate, I guess, is the is my Song the Hedgehog collection on GameCube. Now, for, l for about, I don't know, five years maybe, I was on a Song the Hedgehog kick. And it all started with Sonic Meg collection. Now, the only reason we got this was because my mother 
remember playing it on her Genesis when she was a child. Um, I believe, I, I don't know if it's true, but I believe my, my father had the Nintendo when he was, SNES when he was younger, and and my mother had a Genesis. I'm not sure how that works because they would have been teenagers around the time. But basically, she remembers this from the Genesis. Um, now, the funny part is they, mom played it once and that was it. Like most adults do. However, I still continue to play a lot. It was Sonic 3 that I really liked a lot. And because I like most of these games on this collection, I was into a Sonic Hedgehog kick. And I got pretty much all of the available Sonic games on the GameCube. And I'll start with this, Sonic Mega Collection. This is a great way to play the classic Sonic games in a current form. But there are so many collections that include pretty much all the Sonic Hedgehog games that this is just one way to do it. So... Keep looking out for this. I believe it's also on the PlayStation 2, which is good. By the way, that jump cut was so powerful it opened my door. <laughs> Next was Sonic uh, Adventure DX Director's Cut. Now... Obviously, if I didn't if I didn't own anything in the generation of the 64, that also means I didn't own anything from the Dreamcast. So, I have not played the original. The first time I played this game was the GameCube version. And I played this a lot because it was an open, not open world, but it was similar to Mario 64, where you basically had to find uh, the levels. And I thought that was, I always liked the adventure of the overworld. Um, now, I have heard that this is an inferior version to the original from a graphical standpoint. I don't know. I can't really miss what I never had. So, anybody who experiences that, let me know. Is the original uh, is the original version on the uh, Dreamcast the way to go? I don't know. Now, the funny part about this is that it's called Director's, it's called director's Cut, but I don't think a whole lot that was cut from the originals in here. Like for instance, the mission mode and the and the way to play classic Game Gear games, I can't imagine was in the original. I think there was just a marketing ploy. But basically the big difference in this one versus the original is one is a mission mode, which basically means you can basically has you find different emblems in the overworld. And the Game Gear mode where you can play classic song games on the Game Gear. There really isn't a whole lot extra about this. But still, it was a good game for when I was younger. Now, a much better Sonic game on the GameCube, Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. This is a port off Sonic Adventure 2 from Dreamcast. I believe this one was actually released first, then DX on the GameCube. And I do say that I prefer this. I prefer Adventure Two over Adventure. Um, now, when it comes to the extras, there's really no extras except a new battle mode, which, while the original Sonic Adventure Two had, this one is more robust. And and I did play with it with some friends before. It did keep us busy, so that was fun. What I like about this is that the mechanics are a lot better. It doesn't. It's not like Sonic Adventure where Sonic Adventure feels like a literal camera switch. Like it feels like a regular Sonic game just in 3D. This one feels like it's a little different than most Sonic games, but that's fine. Uh, the Sonic and Shadow levels are really good, and they've revamped the Knuckles ex exploration levels as well. I think this game is just a lot, a lot better put together than than Sonic Adventure. Now, I haven't heard too much about the port. In fact, I think some people actually prefer this port over the original, so I don't know. I'm really pissed off you ask. Sonic Adventure 2, battle. Next is a game I just referenced uh, about 15 minutes ago. Sonic Heroes. I don't think I saw any advertisements. I just remember seeing this in the stores around the time we got Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. And I was like, you know what? I've liked the, uh, I like Sonic Adventure DX. I'll probably like Sonic Adventure 2. And I should get Sonic Heroes as well. Eventually, my father did. Like I said earlier, 
I think he got some kind of deal, like a two for one deal, but I won't get one free or something like that. And he got this and Wind Waker. And it's kind of ironic. I played this a lot at first, but the problem is the game is pretty flawed, and after a while, I just kind of got sick of it. It took me a couple of years to actually complete it, not because it was hard, but because I just didn't care to. And the biggest issue is that you have four teams, and they all share the exact same levels. So you're playing the game four times. That's a bit of a disappointment, considering that in Song Adventure, e while each character may share some levels, the objective is different, and sometimes the layout is different. Not to mention, players like Knuckles can get to places that Sonic can't. In Sonic Adventure 2, every single character has their own level, so there's no real, uh, there's no real, uh, intermixing there. Like, Sonic has his own levels, and Eggman has his own levels, etc., etc. But here, each one of them shares the levels, and it gets really repetitive after a while. And the final boss really is not, it's not like the other two games, where it's not really worth the trouble. But, if, like, it's probably fairly cheap if you want to try it. It's on all three systems. If you find it for, like, 10, 15 bucks, I say pick up. You might like it. Who knows? I do know it, a lot of people actually do hold it in fairly high regard. I just th thought it got boring after a while. Sonic Heroes. Next Sonic game I got is Shadow the Hedgehog. Now, I actually didn't know this game actually really existed. I just got it because, again, I was on a Sonic kick. Um, the funny part is, I don't like this game, but not for the same reasons other people don't. Like, a lot of people had a problem with Shadow having a gun and weapons. I thought that was kind of cool. It's like, you know, you just shoot things. Like, what, what like, 10-year-old boy doesn't like that? Or fit, or 12, or however old I was. The big issue I had was the controls. Shadow is so slippery and so easy to die because the controls just do not work very well. It wasn't with that. I'd heard this game much higher regard, but it's really hard to play this with that those, that control scheme. Also, it has branching story with an asterisk. The problem is it has set um, cutscenes after whatever you do after having you, if you complete the neutral, good or bad version of each level. And the problem is that if you watch them all together, none of them make sense. Because that is like, this is not one of those games that, that are, that's good at branching stories. You literally could be evil all the, all, through uh, through like six levels in a row, and then choose the good out of nowhere, uh, and get the good ending. It's like, it doesn't make sense story-wise. And that's just the big problem with this game, is it, it, tries to be too, it tries to be more than it really is. But again, if you find it for like 5 or $10, maybe you'll like it. Shout out to Hedgehog. And it's on, I think, every system at that time as well. And I'll end it with this brief one. Uh, I think this is the last song we've got. <laughs> Sonic Riders. And it's in one of those cases. It's, uh, just like with, it's in one of those cases. I'm not going to tap on this. Uh, the funny part is, a, race, a Sonic racing game it seemed like... A dream come true for me. It's like basically Sonic who run fast in a racing game and on a hovering skateboard, which I thought was a really good idea. And yeah, the game is pretty fun. It's not quite like Mario Kart. It's a little more awkward. Controlling it can be a little difficult. And the items are a little, uh, let's just say, dumb. But I think it's a really good game. It's, it kept me entertained when I was younger. Uh, I, I like how you can, there are numerous, there are a lot of characters and you can uh, basically switch boards similar to uh, switching carts in Mario Kart. It's actually a really interesting idea, and I think they improved upon it uh, very well in the next game, which we'll talk about when we get to Wii, but Sonic Heroes. And let's go to the next group. Now next, we're on to racing games. And because I had so many on the GameCube, I'm separating them between good, the good racing games and the bad racing games. But let's start with the good racing games. First, is this random little gem called ATV2 Quad Power Racing. Uh, this was one of the four games I got when I got the GameCube. I think it was like five dollars, something like that. I got it because like it's a racing game. At that time I was big into racing games. If you remember my video on my Super NES, I played Top Gear and a Stunt Racer FX a lot in my youth. And that helped me 
and that basically facilitated my love of racing games. And the fir- one, the first one, one of the uh, games I got was a racing game, and another w- one of the four games I got was a racing game, which is in the bad section. We'll get to that later. But this game, I always thought it was a little frustrating because it's a little hard to control, but it's actually really fun and holds up pretty well today. It actually, look the graphics are pretty good for its time and have aged remarkably well. Now, unfortunately, this series I don't think made it anymore onto Nintendo systems, as I don't think the first one is on the GameCube, and I know the third one isn't. This is mostly a PlayStation 2 uh, franchise, but if you have a PS2, which I know a lot of people do, or you can find them easily, get all three. I'm sure all three are good. Again, ATV2 Quad Power Racing. Ironically, one of my favorite sections in this was not the racing, it was the obstacle courses. Next is the game that made me want a GameCube in the first place at the time. Mario Kart Double Dash. I remember when I was like 7 or so, a couple of years before I got the GameCube, I wanted this game because I saw it on demo uh, when, mom and dad, when my mom and dad were uh, shopping for a TV. I was like, whoa, this, sound, this looks so cool. Because at the time, I was playing the Mario Kart on the Game Boy, the Game Boy Advance, uh, Mario Kart Super Circuit. And that was my first introduction to Mario Kart. So this 3D looking Mario Kart with two people on the carts, that was that was so cool. And it's funny because at the time, I, uh, when we were getting the GameCube, I did not even remember this existed. Um, now we got it for 40 Now, the funny part is, we got it for $40, but I forgot exactly what the circumstances were. We ended up getting it for free, and I don't remember why. Uh, another ironic thing is that this wasn't one of my early ones. This was one of the later games in my collection, because I kind of forgot about it at one point. But if this is a great game. One thing I like about it is it's not derivative of any other Mario Kart. Like, for instance, Mario Kart 64 kind of replaces Mario Kart, Super Mario Kart. Uh, Mario Kart DS replaces 64. Mario Kart Wii replaces Mario Kart DS. Mario Kart 7, what, Mario Kart 7 doesn't really replace it because it's a handheld. And Mario Kart 8 replaces Mario Kart Wii. It's like, there's no real reason for the most part to go back to any of them, but this one, there is a big reason. Like, there's no other game that's like this. And I'm really hoping that if we don't get a sequel to this, we at least get a mode we can ride with two people. Mario Kart Double Dash. Now, a racing game deserves way more love than it gets. F-Zero GX. If I had to pick a favorite racing game on the GameCube, and potentially a favorite racing game of all time, it would be this game. That's pretty funny because this is infamous for its difficulty, and I was young when I was playing this. I actually, the funny part is, I didn't want this game, really. Like, this isn't looking, this doesn't look good to me. But my, but my father said that he remembers F-Zero, and, he, and I'll probably like it. I was like, okay, I'll try it. And it's pretty ironic. A game I didn't really want became arguably my favorite racing game. Eh... You hear a lot about its difficult. You hear a lot about its infamous difficulty, and everything you say, and everything you hear is true. It's a it's a wonder that I played it uh, so much when I was younger of how difficult it was. Maybe that's why I'm so good at at things that are difficult because of this game. Who knows? Like, I don't want to brag. I don't toot my own horn, but I'm I get I get regular A's in math in my math courses pre calc and, and calc. And it seems like I never understood why so many people have trouble with it. It's possible that part of the reason I uh, do well with hard challenges is because of this game. Like, this game is so difficult. But it's so fun and so rewarding we finally get it. I've had this game for longer than probably 15 years. Well, yeah, about 15 years or so. And I still haven't completed everything. Uh, if you find this, this is definitely a wor- this, even if you don't like racing games that much, this is definitely this is definitely a worthwhile uh, thing to your collection. The only issue is that it's expensive. This game did not sell well, and that's because of the critics. A lot of critics said that it's too difficult, and I think it's like this killed the franchise and it shouldn't have, and that's sad. But maybe we'll hopefully it'll get more love in the future. Again, F Zero GX.
Next on the GameCube is a random game I got for pretty cheap, like $8 or something. Burnout. No subtitle, just Burnout. I'm not sure where this fits in the franchise. Like, did it start on the GameCube? Did it start on the PS2? Did it start on both? I don't know. But I do know that I got this game because it's like, it's a racing game. Of course I'm going to get it. And what I love about it is the reason everyone else loves Burnout. It's the crashes. I always thought it was so cool how realistic crashes were. Um, I used to play this game a lot, but the only thing that annoyed me was, the only thing that kept me from playing it more was for two reasons. One, I owned F-Zero GX already. And two, there was a timer. A lot of times I could be, sometimes I would get really frustrated with the game. I would be in first, but I would run out of time and I would lose, not because I was last, but because I ran out of time. And it's like, why is there a timer in racing? It was like an arcade game. I never liked racing, arcade racing games. But I did play it a bit, and I still love it. Uh, in fact, I'm thinking about getting the uh, Burnout Paradise remake, remake on the Switch. I haven't decided yet, though. But, again, Burnout. Not as robust as the new ones, but still a good time. Alright, you guys remember when I said I had a uh, thing, f when I had a bit of a Sonic the Hedgehog fixation? Well, around that time, I had another fixation as well, for Need for Speed. And I'll start with this game. Need for Speed Hard Pursuit 2. Again, much like with Burnout, I got this because it was a racing game. And, like, the uh, Lamborghinis are such cool cars, and like I looked at the covers like, oh yeah, I gotta play this. And I play this, even today I play this all the time. What, what I like about it is the physics of it are much different than the other Need for Speeds and other racing games. It's so it's a bit clunky and everything's so heavy, but it makes the um, racing more strategic. It's really hard to explain unless you've played it yourself. But yeah, because I like this game so much, I got into a kick with Need for Speed. That should have extended farther than it did, but that's another story. Uh, but Need for Speed Heart Pursuit 2. It's on pretty much every system, including the PC. If you can find it, I recommend it. It doesn't have the features that newer games have, but I think it's worth it. it's worth ten dollars. Next, I got it again because it was Need for Speed. Need for Speed Most Wanted. Now the funny part is, to my remembrance, wasn't this game somewhat suggestive? Like, there was some half-dressed women in it. I don't remember very well. But I remember being pretty suggestive for someone who... I think I was like 11 when I got this game. And my parents didn't know the difference. Yeah, there was someone on there that could be. But it's like... One thing I like about this game is that it was more arcade -y feeling. Uh, things were more stiff, but it felt like more of an arcade. It didn't feel like Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2, where it was more realistic. It was kind of interesting at first when I was younger that it had a story mode, but it got really annoying fast. One thing I liked was the customizations. You could take cards you've already unlocked and customize them in regular racing, which I did all the time. I didn't play this game as much as most want as a, a Hot Pursuit 2, but I think it's still a pretty good game. Now keep in mind, this is most wanted 2000, uh, well, 2001, but I don't think that's right. Anyway, there's also one in 2013 that's called Most Wanted, and it's not the same game. I just want to let you know that now. You can't get, like, the Wii U or PS4 version of Most Wanted and expect the same game as this. So I'll just let you know that right now. Need Speed Most Wanted. Then what we have is the sequel to this game, I think. Need for Speed Carbon. The reason I think is because a lot of the actors from the first one are back, and they act like your characters come back, but it's it's weird. Um, Gameplay-wise, I think this game is a little better than Most Wanted, uh, because it focuses on, like, turf wars type thing, but in other ways, it's not as good because it being night makes the, makes the uh, graphics less creative, and the car selection, I don't remember it being as good. But still, I still played the heck out of this thing because I like the uh, the gimmicks of it. And this is kind of someone who doesn't like a whole lot of gimmicks in their games. For instance, you can have a partner while racing that can help you or hinder your opponents. It's an interesting idea. Uh, 
This will be an interesting game to remake. So, Need for Speed Carbon. Now, these two games I got very recently. These are the last two games that I've added to my collection, I believe. Need for Speed Hot Pursuit and Hot Pursuit 2. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> Need for Speed Underground and Underground 2. Now, the funny part about this is that I didn't get these games for one really stupid reason. When I heard they were called Need for Speed Underground, I was thinking, okay, so we're going to race through sewers? I don't want to play that. That's boring. I did not know that Underground meant that it was, you know, what people think of Underground, like away from public or away from public knowledge. Uh, the games are actually a bit different. Need for Speed Underground focuses more on a list of races you have to complete, while Underground 2 is um, more open world, similar to Most Wanted and Carbon. I don't have much to say about Underground 2 because when I start playing it, the disc doesn't work, which is weird because it worked for a while, they just stopped working. I guess I got this used. Underground, on the other hand, I've been playing a lot, and it is really good. The only the only problem I have with this, I've won it for a while, and it's similar to Most Wanted. In fact, I probably feel the same about Most Wanted if I played this for a while and then got Most Wanted. It's like, that's four games now that are basically s the same. And it's a little disappointing. But it's still a pretty good game. You can also get on the PC. Again, Need for Speed Underground and Need for Speed Underground 2. Well, that's it for the good racing games. Now let's get on to the quote-unquote bad racing games. Boom. Alright. These are, these are what I call the bad racing games. And what I mean by bad, I don't necessarily mean that they're bad games, but they're flawed games or glitchy games. So let's start. First off, there's a game called Drone Racers. This was one of the four games I got originally for the GameCube. Nowadays, it's not really worth playing. It's basically a Mario Kart ripoff, but with the the Lego Racer set that was popular back in the early 2000s. Um, I got this game because it was Lego, because everyone likes Legos, and it's a racing game again because I like racing games. I do even to this day. I do like the format of their uh champ of their championship mode. Generally. Like with Mario Kart, it's a point system. If you win, if you win um, a uh, if you win a race, you get a certain number of points. Here, it's a little different. Every race, they they take your time, and the difference between the time of each competitor, you start out the next race, and the only thing you have to do is come in first in the last race. If that makes any sense. For instance, in race one, if I finish sec seven seconds ahead of the second placer, then I start the race seven seconds ahead of him. And all that matters is whoever finishes the last race in first, which I thought was really unique, and I do kind of wish more racing games do that. But that's really the only thing here that's really worth a second look in the game, because the items they use are very derivative of Mario Kart, and some of them don't even make a lick of sense. But it's an okay game. It's not horribly flawed, it's just not really worth it for an adult to play. And I stopped playing this around the time I got F-Zero, Need for Speed, and Mario Kart, so. But if you have like an eight-year-old, this might be fun for him, or her, uh, Drone Racers. Next is a game that I don't know if it's necessarily a racing game. It has a racing mode, but it's not really a racing game is Smuggler's Run War Zones. It's called War Zones because that was the uh, GameCube variant. This game is kind of it's kind of weird they actually let me play this when I was younger. Basically what's going on here is you have to get contraband over to a certain area in each mode and try to avoid law enforcement and try to uh, not damage the goods. It's funny because you 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 deliver things that are kind of innocuous, like like uh, ceramics and things that are like that are obviously bombs and packages of stuff, which 
I think are probably drugs. It's pretty funny that they allowed that they actually got this from me when I was younger. I won this. I found this game at a game at an EB Games. I'm not sure those are still around for a really cheap price, and I got it because I thought it was a racing game. How wrong I was, but I played this a lot uh, back in the day. I consider this one of the bad games because it's very glitchy. There's a glitch I used to do all the time where if you angle one of the cars drift right in the air, it will indefinitely fly up. And I thought that was really weird. I liked to have it fly up for like half an hour, then move it so it falls down and it just destroys the car. I don't know why. You know, simple things uh, mean simple lines. So, Smugglers one run war zones. There's really no reason to get it now. It's from Rockstar Games, maybe. I don't know. Next game is Driven. I got this game pretty much the same reason as the Need for Speed game, sorry, any other racing game, because it's, it's a racing game. I had no clue it was based on a movie. That was something I did not even know until a couple of years later. Uh, it's based on the movie called Driven, starring Sylvester Stallone. Uh, it's a pretty generic racing game. I got it because I like Formula 1. I liked Formula 1 when I was younger. It became obsolete when I got a Formula 1 game on my 3DS. Though, it, there, it, there's not much to this game. The story mode's short. There are very few characters to actually race as. Very few tracks. Six tracks, I believe. Um, this game doesn't have much worth now. I don't really recommend it now. It has a good nostalgia value for me, but that's about it. Again, Driven. Next is a game that has a special value to me. Uh, what was it called? Jeremy McGrath Supercross World. Uh, honestly, this is not a very good game. It is very glitchy. It doesn't control very well. And I think it's one of the lowest rated games on the GameCube. And it's made by Acclaim to add good insult to injury. But it holds value to me because around the time I got this, my dad broke his hand, his right hand. And we played this a lot while he was injured. Uh, I don't know why we played this. I don't know if he thought it was fun or if he just liked playing with me. I don't know. But we played it a lot. And that's a good memory. It wasn't a great game. And I wasn't very good at it. Neither was he. Maybe that was the fun part. The funny part is we didn't do a whole lot of racing. We did a lot, we did the freestyle stuff. I don't know why. But we liked the the um, freestyle mode. Just doing the tricks. Seeing if we can land them or not. So I, so it has nostalgic value for me, but to be honest, the game is worth nothing now. Once I got MX vs. ATV, the only reason I didn't get rid of this game is because dad's because my dad said he didn't want me to, and you know, that's fine. It's I can get what fifty cents for it off a uh, GameStop. It's just worth it to keep it. It's not really worth it to find it now, but it exists. Next was a game I can't believe I spent $20 on. Pro Rally. I have always liked the idea of rallies, you know, where you you don't race against competitors directly. You race their times. You, you know those are. Baja rallies. I thought that was going to be something like this, and it is, but it's kind of barren. It ha ironically, the other modes that are not rallies are much better. The problem is that it's... It doesn't control the way you expect a rally game to control, and there isn't much to do. It's not worth $20. If you find it for maybe $3, maybe, to add to your collection. But as is, the customization on the cars are not that great or even noticeable, except for the tie, except for changing the tires. It's just not that great. But here it is. And last in the bad game in racing games is a doozy. Smashing Drive. Uh, I got this for one dollar. Actually, to be honest, I'm not gonna lie, one dollar is a pretty good value for this. 
five dollars would be a good value. I got some entertainment out of this. I think this is based on a um, this is based on an arcade game because it feels like an arcade game. It even tells you to put in a quarter if you lose. The premise of this is that you're basically racing the clock. You're supposedly transporting. It's similar to Crazy Taxi, but with less freedom, as it's level oriented, not putting you into a world to find, um, to find uh, people. I play this a lot because of how crazy it is. The big problem with this game is that it's short, really short. Another weird thing I always found is that it had two modes: arcade and survival. But they're both the same. They're both identical. I don't understand what the difference is. Even to this day, I'm not sure what the difference is. And I have never bothered to look in the manual, because I don't think I have one, no. Nor have I bothered to look it up online. Because now it doesn't really have any worth to me. It's nostalgic, but it doesn't have much worth. Uh, if you find it for a dollar, grab it. Why not? But anything more, I don't recommend it. Smash and drive. And the last um, group of games we're going to talk about is going to be the biggest group, the licensed games. So, next cut, you will see it. And last but not least, we have the licensing games. The licensed games. Basically, games that are based on pre-existing products. This can range from good or bad. So, let's just see. First, we saw something weak. Actually, what is this called? Scooby-Doo Night of 100 Frights. This is one of the four... Uh, uh, games I got originally with the GameCube. So if you guys keep count at home, or in case you aren't, that's Luigi's. The first four games I got at the time for my GameCube were Luigi's Mansion, Drone Racers, AT, uh, ATV2 Quad Power Racing, and Scooby Doo 900 Frights. And I got this game because of the games available for the price that my parent, that my father was willing to pay, whatever that price was. This was this was the game that uh, I recognized. In fact, we probably wouldn't have gotten this game, but I I thought like right before we check out, I was like, eh, why not? Um, yeah, this isn't very good. The problem I have is that while I like the open world, it's hard to control and it's not intuitive what you have to do. Not to mention, it's one of those games that's hard to pick up and play again if you haven't played it in a while, which part, which I think for like a few months I didn't play it, they went back to it, and I forgot, I was like, I don't want to start all over, and it's been collecting dust. If I were to play it again, I am 100% certain I would have to start all over, I'm not sure how long that would take. Um, the irony of all this is that on the disc, there is a there is a video advertisement for another Scooby-Doo game, which, is, which looked a lot better at the time. It's like, oh man, why couldn't I have gotten that one instead? And the uh, annoying thing is, I think it said only on the PS2. Well, if it's only on the PS2, why advertise it on the GameCube? <laughs> what are you going to do? But, here it is. Scooby Doo Dive 100 Frights. I don't recommend it. I can't imagine England really going to like it. Now let's talk about three games that I did not expect to like nearly as much as I did. First up... Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3, and to avoid any heart attacks from, from uh, well, actually, I guess it would be two, sorry, heart attacks from uh, um, Suspense, it's actually two Tony Hawk games that I liked. The third one is another Tony Hawk game that I didn't like as much, but we'll get to that later. Tony Hawk 3, I got because it was cheap price, like a skateboarding game, that could be cool. The funny part is, I had another skateboarding game around this time called Evolution Skateboard, I think, is what it was called. But I got rid of that years ago because it, it wasn't nearly as good as these Tony Hawk games. And I think this the game was the reason why I got I, I got rid of it because at the time I thought the Evolution Skateboarding game was good. Then I got this. It's like, yeah, it's not very good. This is much better. What I like about this is the is, is the fluid controls and the level designs. Uh, it's a little barren in modes uh, in, in the content compared to the next game on the list. Whoop. But I did like I liked the fact you create your own level, and I liked the different board you can win and the missions and stuff. It's like it was so good. I played this all the time when I was younger, and it was really difficult. Like like you had to, not compared to next game, but you had to get some really high scores to complete some of these levels. And I just played this all the time. Tony Hawk Pro Skater Three. 
actually, I think there's a launch title for the GameCube. As you can see, I only paid $3 for this. Not bad. And for $5, I got the much superior, far superior, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 4. Uh, pretty much everything I liked about the third one, I like about the fourth one. I think controls are more fluid, and the modes are more uh, substantial. The only thing I would say is not as good is the levels. Like, some levels in number three are very creative, like Suburbia is very creative. These are more based on real-life locations, which aren't as fun, but they're still really, really good. Like, Alcatraz is really fun. That's probably my favorite level. And the, the car Carnival is also really good. What I like about this is that it was more of an open world in the mission mode, where you had to go from person to person to to get a job, and that they, you know, a job where they wanted you to do something. And it can be, like, grind on a certain rail, or, I, like, it's hard, there's a lot of things you can do here, and that's part of the reason why it's so fun. But I think part of the reason why it, it uh, sucks so much time out of me is the sheer difficulty. Some of the, um... Uh, some of the missions they have you do are insane. Like, the the bad ones are the combos. We have to hold a combo until you get a certain score. That's insane with our cheat codes. And boy, was I happy when I discovered the cheat codes in this game. Uh, if you like the skateboarding games, this one's the best in the series. Up until... Uh, this one's the best in the series, I assume, until I tried Tony Hawk Underground games. Which I've talked about in a minute. Tony Hawk Pro Skater 4. And last in the Tony Hawk series I got is Tony Hawk American Wasteland. I spent more than double, more almost triple, no, more than triple than I did on the other games. Other games combined, I spent $8, this one I spent $25. And it was not really worth that price. Um, I have heard that this is basically Tony Hawk Underground 3, and I'll get to that in a minute. One thing I like about this is that I like that I, it was an open world for the most part. The weird thing is it says that there's no loading here. And that basically means they can go from level to level in the open world without loading. But the problem is that's very uh like they kinda lie. What they what they have you do is if you go from level to level, you go through a long corridor with some rails and stuff in there just for show. And I think that's to get around the fact that it has to load. It's just that's not what I meant. Another problem is that the story mode was not only much easier, but it was also not as inspired. It's like, it was more in-depth, but I, I didn't care. I don't think anyone did. I don't think this game did as well as the other ones. And it's like, I really wanted to like this game. I thought I would because I played a demo of it. And I was like, oh, why wow, you get off your skateboard? You can't graffiti? The, the, this level called Minneapolis looks so good. Oh, man, this game's going to be awesome. And then when I got it and doing the story mode and the levels that came with it, it's like, oh. And it's kind of ironic that those best levels in this game are actually retreads of uh, the old Tony Hawk games and the Tony Hawk Underground games. And that's part of the reason why I wanted to get Tony Hawk Underground games. Uh, I've actually been looking for the Underground games on the GameCube for, I'd say, a decade maybe. Like, I don't want to buy them online because if they don't work, GameCube games are nearly impossible to refurbish. So if they don't work, I have to send it back, get money back, whatever. And it's like, I don't want to deal with that. So I've been hoping to find them at Goodwill, where like a dollar or two. So if I don't, if it doesn't work, at least I'll leave them down a dollar or two. But hopefully I'll find those, so fingers crossed. Next are two games that I played a lot when I was younger and still hold in high regard. Especially considering how bad the new ones are. Lego Star Wars. I played the... I'm not sure if you guys remember this, but there was a there was a store card block, Blockbuster where you can rent videos. I know. Rent physical videos. Well, while my parents were looking for movies to rent, I would go to a kiosk and play demos. And the demo I always played was the PS2 Lego Star Wars. And when I heard that this was going to be... When I heard this was on the GameCube, I had to have it. I played hours on this. And that's funny because it doesn't have hours of content, I don't think. But it was so addicting to go through the uh, the movies, one of which I hadn't seen. When we got this, I had never seen um, 
episode three, but it didn't matter. I knew pretty much what was going on, and it was really fun. One thing I really loved was finding the find the extras they had to find. Like it's basically a collectathon, and it's it's really good. Um, nowadays, it has value. Um, it's probably better if you get the complete saga version on the Wii, because if you have a working Wii U, you can just play on there. And from what I read, it's basically the same game. It has some extras, but it's the same game. Uh, but yeah, this game is really good. So I recommend it highly, as well as the sequel. Lego Star Wars 2. Honestly, I kind of prefer this one over the original. Uh, that might be due to the fact that it's based on the uh, original movies, which I as many as 99% of people consider to be far superior. Now, when I was younger, the idea of creating your own character, even though it was rudimentary by today's standards, it was really cool back then. And you could ride classic rides from, uh, classic machines from the series. One thing that I really, that blew my mind was there was a, there, there was a mode called Old Save or something like that, where you can play the characters they unlocked from the previous Lego like, Star Wars. So you have like Qui-Gon Jinn in Return of Jedi. <coughs> And everything good about the Lego Star Wars is here too. Find all the, um, finding all the uh, good, uh, unlockable goodies, which was a little harder this time around. Not to mention the extra modes where you can play as cl- classic machines from the uh, older v- uh, um, movies as well. It's like this game is really good, a little better than the other one, and I highly recommend it. I recommend that you try to find the complete saga on the Wii. Alright, and the next game we have is Star Wars Rebel Strike Rogue Squadron 3. Um, $15, that's an okay price, I guess. Uh, I got this game a little while after the Lego Star Wars games. Um, I think I got this because everyone likes Star Wars and I like the other two games, so I think I like this one too. And I did for the most part. The only thing I didn't really like was this difficulty. You see, after every uh, mission, you get awarded a certain medal, depending on how well you do. And I could never get gold because I never knew what l- targeting efficiency was. Efi- targeting efficiency. Even to this day, I'm not entirely sure what they mean. Because e- cause even though, even if I'm very careful on hitting, making sure 100% of my shots hit the, uh, hit the um, uh, villains, I never get that one I never get enough to get gold and it's like you have to have like 99.5% efficiency so I um, may have to look into that one day one thing that I was always annoyed by was the multiplayer mode not because it wasn't so bad because it was so good I got this game I got this uh, game around the time that I moved like for the third time uh, in California and as a homeschooler it can be homeschooled kid it can be hard to find friends for me it was, but not for the reason you guys are thinking. Let's just say California is not friendly to homeschooling families. At Well, at the time they weren't supposed to, but now they are worse. And my mother was always afraid of me, of the um, uh, of kids saying that I was homeschooled and then we'd cause problems. Um, I can go into more detail in a future ramble if you want me to, but let's just say that that's I, I didn't have any social problems, like most homeschool kids don't. I had problems because we were harassed. I ain't gonna need to with that if you want. But, let's just say, anyway, I couldn't play the multiplayer game, the multiplayer mode, and it sounds like it's a, basically a full version of a game, just a multiplayer mode. But the issue is that it's really good. It's more based on the movies than this game is. And I wanted to, or, like, I either wanted to play that mode, or I wanted to go against a computer in this multiplayer mode. It's like, Really, I'm gonna have like I'm gonna have no friends now. <laughs> oh, well. it is what it is. But it's an okay game. I'm sure the multiplayer is really fun. So if you find it for well, not fifteen dollars, but eight ten dollars. I say give it a grab. Next is Monster Jam Maximum Destruction. Um, pretty simple. This is not a racing game, so I didn't have it in the racing section. It has a racing mode, but it's not a racing game. Anyway, I got this because I like monster trucks. Who doesn't? There's really nothing to say here. It's an okay game. It's a little confusing on how to perform well in it. But 
when you do. Um, I always found it very difficult for a monster truck game because the object is to destroy the other monster trucks. But the issue is that to destroy one, you have to take damage, and by the time you go to the next one, you're already pre-damaged, so the unit says damage, I'll tell you, sure. Even the normal mode is difficult, and the hardcore mode is impossible. I did like the design of the monster trucks, and all the variety, like, I think it was like 40 monster trucks here, hold on, does it say? Oh, 26. <laughs> okay, well, still, it felt like a lot. Uh, if you find it for $5, give it a buy, I guess. It's not really worth that much. I'm sure there are other monster truck games that are worth more. I don't know. Monster Truck, Monster Jam, like Maximum Destruction. By the way, fun fact, it's called Maximum Destruction, but the Monster Truck called Maximum Destruction is not in the game. Next we have Mega Man Network, Network Transmission, another game I cannot believe I spent $15 on. I got this game because around the time I was watching the... Uh, the series, uh, Network Connection. Um, this was actually the first Mega Man game I played. I did not play another game until like a decade plus later when I got the collection on the 3DS. This game is not that great. I, again, I got it because I remembered it from the series and I thought, oh, that could be a good, that could be an interesting idea for a game. It doesn't work all that well. It's stiff. You can't really move that well. And it's not because it's just Mega Man, as the old Mega Man games control a lot better. Um, it's not really worth that much. Apparently the Game Boy games based on apparently from why from what I understand, the series is based on a Game Boy game line. And this game is based on a series. So this game is based on a series which is based on a Game Boy game line. Game Boy Game Boy Advance game line. It's not really worth much nowadays. I don't recommend it. I don't know why I haven't gotten rid of it yet, but here it is. Next is a game called Yu-Gi-Oh! The False Bound Kingdom. Whatever that means. I got this game because around the time I was watching Yu-Gi-Oh! and getting the cards and playing the game with my father and some friends. Um, yeah, this is not very good. The problem is that it's misleading. And now granted, it's not misleading per se. The box clearly says what this game is about. The problem is that it's an RPG game where you control the monsters going through an open world, not playing the card game. And man, was that disappointing. I didn't play a whole lot of that game once I figured that out. And holy crap, this thing has a really uh, thick, this thing has a really thick manual. I never noticed that. Whatever. It's it's really hard to get past the fact that I thought I was going to be able to play the card game on the GameCube. And, and the irony of all this is that I don't think GameCube has a version they can play the card game on. The Game Boy Advance does, but that's, that's going to be difficult. Uh, it's not really worth much now. I got this used, so I didn't get the three cards that came with it, so what are going to do? Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! The False Bound Kingdom. Next we have Cars, the video game. Yes, I'm one of those people who own it. Actually, this game sold really well, so a lot of people own this on multiple systems. Um. I, f I first heard about Cars, like a lot of people did, from the teaser trailer, I think, in The Incredibles. I don't remember. I think it was The Incredibles. Anyway, I love the idea because my favorite toys were Hot Wheels, and it's like, holy crud, Hot Wheels that are alive? That's basically what I play with, and that's not like a dream come true. The funny part is, we had a, uh, there, was a there was a kids special going around in, the, in a mall that we used to go to with a theater. And on that weekend, it was $5 for any of the kids' movies. And my father surprised the family uh, with going to the movie for $5 each. That was a really good deal. Keep in mind, around that time, we were struggling with money. So that was a really nice treat. And a couple of years later, I got this game for my birthday because I love cars. So I'm going to like the video game, right? Mm, well, first off, I will say that it is well done compared to most other T uh, THQ licensed games. Like, the only THQ games I like are the Hot Wheels games. Um, the best one being Velocity X on the PC. 
Uh, this game is not bad, but a lot of things really annoy me about it. First off, it doesn't control as well as you would want it. Because it's really bouncy, and that's because the cars are alive. And the second thing that annoys me is that in the open world, I can only play as lightning. I wanted to play as the other characters, go through and harass people. Because <laughs> what's cool is that here is you can run into cars and they kind of grief you if you do that. And it's like, man, so close, but I get so far. I don't play it nowadays because it's not really worth it to an adult. Maybe for nostalgia purposes, I'll go back to it. I don't know. But for, y for you guys, it's probably not worth hunting down. Again, Car of the Video Game. I love the movie, the game, not so much. And with this last game, I'm going to talk about three games, actually. Backyard Football. Got for $10. Not bad. I did play it a lot at, uh, at the time. Um, this is basically a 7-on-7, seven seven, I think it's, no, yeah, or is it 5 no, I think it's 5-on-5 five five football game with many, uh, infill stars as kids, along with the usual Backyard crew. If you guys know what Backyard games are, you know, the Backyard series, then that makes sense. When I was younger, I got this game because, well, you know, let's start at the beginning of this story. I saw a um advertisement for something called Madden 07 on the GameCube. What I liked it, what clinched me is that there I could pick from multiple teams to play as. I mean, I know it sounded really stupid because it's like, well yeah, it's an info game, of course you can. But on Cart Network it advertised the game where you can select the teams and just play play any team matchup you wanted. And I don't know why, but for some reason that sounds so good to me, so I decided to ask for it on Christmas and lo and behold I got that Christmas. At first, I didn't like it, but as soon as I got into it, I was like, oh, Lord, this is fun, and that's how I got into football. Then, a couple years later, I got Backyard Football. Um, because it's like, well, that's, that's not a cute idea. It's Madden, but with kids. It's not quite that, and part of the reason is because of the roster. Nowadays, like on the Wii version of the Backyard Football, which I don't have anymore, half the roster were NFL stars here. Of the 50 players, I think 15 of them are NFL stars, and it's very quarterback heavy. You have superstar quarterbacks like Peyton Manning, Brett Favre, and Donovan McNabb, and Michael Vick. No jokes. Leave those jokes out of the comments, I don't need that. <laughs> but then you have people like Rich Gannon and Jeff Garcia. It's like, random, but okay. And that's the big problem here, is that it's quarterback heavy, and I think it's like one defender, Javon Kurth. So... It's a good game. I had a lot of fun with that time. Uh, it's not really worth anything to an adult now. Uh, a couple of things I want to talk about with this is the se the, se the second game I want to talk about was Madden 07. That was probably the most played game on the GameCube I have, and I still play it today. Partly because the Madden's nowadays suck. That's just how it is. There's just so many more creative options to do in that game compared to what you get now. That it's just not even worth it, it's worth checking these down. And luckily for um sport games it's very easy to do. And then the third game we'll talk about is NBA uh Live 06. I got that very recently, um, like five years ago. No. Yeah, about five years ago. I got it because I had an NBA game on my Wii, but it's not very... I can't really do much in the way of creating things. And this one, I can't. I can, I can create players. I can create a, a franchise. It's like... It's so much more robust. But those are my sport games. I would show you the other two games, but I don't have them with me right now. So, that concludes my GameCube collection. Uh... My GameCube video game collection. Thank you very much for watching. Are there any GameCube games I missed I should hunt down? Please let me know in the comments below. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for watching. Goodbye. And God bless.